Hello everyone, I'm Dan. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about strings in C, obviously, but the string copy function to be precise there. First things first, go ahead and open up your web browser to my website, thegpu.com. Then select Menu, See Tutorials. Scroll down here to Copying Strings with, with STR Copy, CPY, technically. Okay, um, in my previous tutorial, Strings Part 1, I discussed the basics of how strings are declared and initialized. Now, compared to higher level languages, working with strings in C is a real pain, especially for beginners. Now, strings, which are char arrays, require the developer to manage memory effectively, and doing so takes time, practice, and experience. Now, the main drawback to the way C handles strings is a higher learning curve, but the advantages are well worth it. Now, first and foremost, it's speed, speed, speed. For example, Python is making a huge comeback, especially in the SOC spaces like Raspberry Pi community, but compared to C, Python is literally hundreds of times slower in many operations. Okay, um, this is the function declaration. Now, because this tutorial series is aimed at teaching beginners, I'm putting the cart before the horse in the function declaration above. And don't worry about uh, the strange looking syntax with all the asterisks and all. I'll be getting to what that means in future tutorials. Now, the best way to explain exactly how STRCPY works is by example. So this is straight up from my last tutorial there, char dog, right? Which is a declaration of a dog array. Um, and it has four elements. And then later on, if we try to simply assign it this, this string literal, we're gonna get a compiler error, okay? So this is actually how we do it. We use the STR copy um, function. And this is dog, which is the um, variable name that I signed up there, actually declared up there. And then we can pass in a string literal or another uh, char array of, of some sort. But um, I'm gonna go, I'll go over a lot of stuff in this code, pitfalls and everything like that. So let's go ahead and start exploring some of that. So I'm gonna move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't have one, you can create one really quick by right-clicking new shortcuts, CMD next, and finish. That's all there is to it. Let's go and open that up and type in GCC. You should see this exact message come up, fatal error, no input files. However, if you see something like command um, or phrase, command or phrase unrecognized, watch my tutorial on installing GCC. You want to make sure you get that all configured properly there. CD backslash, let's go down to the root, CDC demo, okay. Uh, oh, actually, let's go back there. Um, do MDC demo, and um, I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll create it for you. Now we can change directories to the C demo folder. And today we are going to create a directory called, uh, what am I gonna call this here? I'm just gonna go with, uh, I'm going to clear the screen here, clean, clean up some of this junk here. I'm going to make a directory here called ST, uh, strcp. Well, if I could type this morning, that'd be great. STR copy demo. Now let's go change directories to that folder there. And, you know, I'll just use Notepad for the hell of it. Notepad, C, Notepad++ is a little better, but uh, I don't know. The last few videos, I've just been doing a Notepad, so... We create the name of this file, strcpydemo.c will be the name of our source code file. And we will scoot that over there. I want to bring my browser back over here. And I've got a lot of stuff planned out for us today. So and you definitely don't want to see me type that in line by line. So copy that and paste it over here. Save it first off. Okay, so we got our standard I.O. and then we've got to include the string.h file. And I haven't gone over really a whole lot of what the pound includes mean and everything like that, but the function str copy from this uh, uh, right up here on this right here is actually in the string.h, only it doesn't have uh, these particular variables listed in there. That's just the destination and source, but anyway. Okay, moving on, um, this will all make sense in a little bit there. This, this function here, print bits forward, it's just, uh, don't worry about what all this does. It's well beyond the scope of this tutorial, so is this. I'll just show you what it'll, what it'll actually do. It's going to display some interesting stuff for the console here, so you can get a thorough understanding of how all this works. But here's the main function, um, and let's go ahead and compile it. 
and run it and then I'll go through kind of a line by line thing on that so let's clear screen let's do GCC and I hit tab to pull that up and then the name of the output file I'm just gonna call it the same thing minus of course C if we do a directory there there is our exe okay so let's clear the screen and let's run it <coughs> okay so to start off with right off the bat here I'm doing a declaration of a string all right which is a char array and it'll have 30 elements okay now um, next thing I'm doing is I'm calling the printf and I'm displaying exactly what is in my string here using the percent %s and then I'm literally typing in end right there and then new line so we can actually see what's actually in it here all right and so if we come up here my string you can actually see there's like some strange characters then there's a up and then another strange character and then a asterisk and then the word end okay so right off the bat you may have heard that um, you know, basically when you declare something you don't initialize it it's going to be filled with garbage and what the garbage is is just left over from what was in those memory spaces from some previous program running you know it could have been anything so um, now print bits forward what that function does is that will actually display the individual bits of the bytes contained in this character array and there'll be 30 of them displayed across here and these are the the binary representations of of those individual bytes in this array and then print chars what that will do is that will actually display all of the garbage that's currently in that particular um, this array here this char array this string okay now um, as you can see this we got a strange character then up and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my browser back over here and pull up my char data type tutorial here I'm gonna scroll down to the ASCII table and let's look at the lowercase u and the lowercase u happens to be right here decimal 117 here's how it's represented in in binary there right and as you can see that matches exactly what we have in in so this is the element zero this is the element one which is the second character there you got the u there and here's p right over here which is the next one and then we've got another piece of junk here and then we've got an asterisk and uh, the asterisk i think is a little bit higher up here bear with me on this. this is all going to make sense in just about one second there so there's the asterisk and then all of a sudden over here what we've got is we've got this zero and this is essentially a null zero just happened to end up in part of the garbage right and so of course watching my last tutorial I told you that the, the null zero terminates a string so the my string even though it's filled with all this garbage it'll only display right up to there and then we have the word and end sorry which is in the printf there so if all that makes sense to you then you're doing pretty good there all right so the next thing that I'm going to go over here is the str copy which um, I'm copying in a string literal dog into my string so then if we display it right here you can see dog and then there's the end of it right there and here's the individual bytes um, D and that's the ASCII O lowercase O and the ASCII lowercase G and here is our null zero now one thing to note about the string copy command is that it only replace these four bytes right here so you can see the garbage um, that's contained in the rest of this array is all the same as it was before so it doesn't do anything beyond that there all right um, now let's move on here and I have declared another variable, string variable, your string, as a char array, right, with the same 30 length of 30 there. And displaying your string, we get um, some junk and then end there, right? And so here's what's in there. Oh, there's our null zero. So we only displayed three things, three characters, and that was it. None of them really mean anything. And there's all the junk that's in there, right? Okay, now I'm going to string copy. Uh, my string which is the source string into your string and of course my string at this point in time contains dog all right and so as you can see now your string contains dog and then it ends right there and so it copied these bytes right up here just these four bytes into these four bytes and you can see it didn't do anything else all the garbage still here is still retained that was left in your string 
All right, now let's now let's talk about how you can really really screw stuff up. Um, so I've done this this declaration of a string here called oops, and it only has two elements in it there, char array. Okay, let's display what's in it to begin with there. All right, and it just so happens it just has an asterisk and a null zero, so that's just pure dumb luck, you know. And the results that you see when you run this program are going to be vastly different than what I have for garbage in there too as well. Uh, but anyway, so that's what we have starting off with oops. All right, now um, if I string copy my string, which has technically four elements in it, D-O-G plus the null zero, right? Um, it will allow us to do that. And so basically what we end up with here, let me scroll down a little bit more because I want to get, and get that towards that. Okay. All right. So when I um, copy my string into it and I display it to the console, as you can see coming up here, it actually does contain dog, even though it was only two characters. And if we, and the next very next line, it actually prints the bits in there. And as you can see, there's still only two bits in this thing. And then if I print the chars that are actually in this array, I end up with DO. Okay. So you might be going, Ooh, what the heck just happened there? Well, the interesting thing about it is, is that, um, well, let's go ahead and do this before I talk about this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this big, long string literal here into oops. Oh, crap. What did I just do? Right? Into oops. And when I display it using printf, right, it actually displays, oh, crap, what did I just do? And then end right there. But if we look at it, it only contains these two bytes, and it only contains O, which is the first two letters here. Now, um... Where other languages I say, you know, uh, the strings are smart and then C I said it's real pain. What you can do is if you're not careful, um, this is byte number one, byte number two, right? Element zero, element number one, str copy, then took more memory space that we don't even know what is in there and, and actually wrote all these ASCII characters into that, right? Into memory space that is not occupied by our variable oops. There could be something in this memory space just after this that might, for example, it might contain an int value. Um, it might contain a whole nother string. Um, you know, it might be a double or a float or something like that. And, and by overriding the string, you may actually change an int value, for example, that has a uh, variable that's holding a checking account balance that has $112 in it, right? And it might all of a sudden get overwritten with, you know, a um, a C or whatever that is, you know, and change the value of that, you know, actually CRIP because it's going to be four bytes on an it in this particular platform. But anyway, you know, you can, you can change their checking account balance in your own program just by overriding this stuff. So that, that's what's going on here. And not only, not only that, right, you can actually see, we declared this as two up here, right? But then we can actually access elements of the array that were never beyond this, right? So they, um, you got element zero, element one, element two, element three, four, and five, and six, right? And we can actually display elements of this array that are larger than array to the console, showing you that, in fact, you know, here is what's going on. Um, so if we had a byte here, this would be C, this would be R, this would be A, and this would be P, and then so on and so forth there. So this is... This is overriding memory, and, and it's one of the things that is just not good in, in, in C and can cause some major bugs, major hard-to-find bugs, and uh, major problems. Anyway, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, close out of that, and leave you guys with some final thoughts here. So, um, now... After watching this video, you should have an idea of why I've been emphasizing the importance of understanding memory management throughout this tutorial series. And I don't, I don't mean to scare you guys or anything like that, because, you know, once again, um, upper level languages like Python, uh, you know, Java, it's really hard to overflow those, those variables and stuff like that without coming up with some runtime error or, you know, compile time error. Um, but, uh, with C, not the case, you can do whatever the heck you want. So, um, just, you have to be aware of these things and, 
once again, it's all about speed, speed, speed. So you can do some really cool, really fast stuff. So anyway, stay tuned uh, for more string manipulation tutorials to come. Thanks for watching.